So here we've got a, um, a young pair of four line snakes. This is it's one of the largest European species um, found across um, Central and Southern Europe, Greece, Croatia, areas like that. Quite open scrubland, um, also up in the treetop tree, tree canopy as well. So they're a really di diverse animal, um, very adaptable and feed on quite a wide range of um, rodents, birds, birds eggs as well. So um, again, can be a, a real farmer's friend this species, but on days like this, so these, these guys have just recently emerged from cremation, been quite uh, dormant over the winter period. Sunny days, again, start bringing them out and showing a lot more activity with them. Um, there's quite a lot of colour variation in too. We've got one quite silvery grey animal and uh, a much darker brown one, and that's quite um, synonymous with the species. Quite a lot of colour variation in them. You can see the blotches down their back still. Um, these dorsal blotches, they gradually fade with age. These these two are about two years old now, probably a little bit, maybe a little, little bit older. And you can see the four lines that are coming down their um, body, these longitudinal stripes, um, which give the animals their name. So they remember the rat, rat snake family, really quite closely related to the North American rat snakes. But as I say, these are European species, They're about six foot long, maybe a bit longer, six and a half feet. Um, quite a, uh, a robust animal, as you can see. Very docile, really nice for, for, for handling like this on, on uh, nice warm sunny days. Um, our oldest animal here at Wildwood is I think about 20 years and uh, still going strong, still doing very well. Um, usually around about with, with say 18 to 22 years would be a, a good life expectancy for a snake of this kind of size. So they're, they're actually an arbor a semi arboreal species, so they like climbing, they're really, really good at climbing, and this is just something that they will do around the branches or anything at all. They're doing it around my hand, around my arm, around each other, anything that they can get a grip on, um, they absolutely will, given the opportunity. So, so that's what they're doing, it's just because they're both there and, uh, and they can that they will. You can see that. Um, so brumation is what we refer to specifically for reptiles, um, hibernation uh, we, we tend to look at for many mammal species but um, it's a semi-dormant period um, the, the, where reptiles, amphibians will um, just slow their, their um, metabolism right right down again because they're heat dependent these animals and they thermoregulate so they get a lot of energy from the sun, all, almost all of their energy from food and sun um, so when that heat isn't there, they just, they'll just shut down completely. Whereas a lot of hibernating species will lose, use the light intensity as well. So changes in uh, in in the UV will, will put animals down. The sense of smell is uh, one of the greatest senses, and just tasting the air, so flicking around just uh, enables them to really taste the environment, to understand the environment that they're in, um, what's around them. Snakes do not have eyelids. You will never, you will never see these snakes blink, or any snake, in fact. Now, they don't have eyelids at all. Um, they have a very clear scale over the eye. So when a sh uh, snake sloughs or sheds its skin, um, it will uh, come off in one piece, and you'll actually see the eye scale um, shed along with everything else as well. Mm. Have a skeleton, and it looks very much like you'd imagine it probably probably would. It looks a lot like the snake with lots of pairs of ribs all the way down it. So yeah, they, they certainly do have skeletons, um, they are a vertebrate um, and that skele skeleton is then protected by um, rows and rows of muscles that, that make these animals particularly, they're a constricting species, um, so it gives them their, their strength, very powerful animals. Using me like a branch. <laughs>